okay so now let us implement the lex vendorf method so if you look at the lex vendorf method here the slope at inside this cell is evaluated by using a forward difference what does that mean is uh, we take uh, this distance which is again delta x since it is uniformly spaced and this will be delta u so delta u here is equal to ui plus 1 minus ui and the derivative is given as delta u by delta x wherein delta u is basically this value uh, which is taken by using a forward difference right otherwise everything is same as uh, beam and warming so our this this value here is going to be ui minus half and this value here is going to be ui plus half so let us implement this and see what results we get and how is it different from beam and warming so i'll just copy this and paste it again instead of beam and warming i'll have lex vendorf and here while calculating the derivative instead of using a backward difference i will have a forward difference so i'll have ui plus 1 minus ui right so this is done and we should have our lex vendorf method implemented so let me delete this files okay here there is one important thing you might have noticed uh, i think i closed that plot one important thing you might have noticed is that the oscillations are leading here right the after the discontinuity we have the oscillation here again similarly after the discontinuity we have our oscillations so the oscillations are leading in uh, beam and warming uh, this is what happens in lex and lex vendorf you will see that we will have our oscillations lagging that is we will have oscillations behind the discontinuities so this is lex vendorf so we should have our oscillations lagging so let me run this code and see what actually happens so let me let me run the python code and get the plots ha uh, actually um, i did not change it to uh, lex vendorf method so this results are basically for basically the same ones that is uh, beam and warming so let me remove this and let me change this to lex vendorf so that that particular case will be uh, run uh, let me run this code again and this files are being generated let me now run the python code and get the plots now you will see that this oscillations are pretty huge no doubt this is the lex vendorf method this oscillations are pretty huge but still it is a stable method it does not blow up the way we saw it earlier happening in case of obviously this oscillations are too 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 much uh, we can obviously reduce the amount of oscillations by uh, reducing the cfl number however we are not going to do that because this was just a demonstration yeah there is one more important thing that i would like to point out here that even though i have been calling this beam and warming and lex and lex vendorf method this methods which are implemented are 
just having the properties of beam and warming and lex van der method they are not exactly equal to lex van der method or beam and warming method the reason is that uh, if you remember uh, we have been taking only one state value to calculate the uh, derivative however as time progresses uh, the state values keep changing and we are not integrating it over time to calculate what is the uh, real amount of flux which is being calculated this is normally a very general practice which is used in cfd uh, for a couple of reasons first of all it makes our methods explicit uh, in nature which are much easier to implement also we uh, what we do is we take multiple steps in time and therefore this effect of uh, not using a continuous uh, change uh, uh, which is happening over time uh, i mean with the, not using this continuous change does not affect much because we are using higher order uh, runge kutta methods okay uh, well i'll not go into the details of that uh, since it will make simply things complicated uh, instead let us implement the from method now and check what happens